everyone. It's Sarah McLean, and we are live on Facebook on the Avon Romance Facebook page. I'm coming to you from a very purple room at HarperCollins. They didn't tell me that I shouldn't wear purple, so we're very purple today. On Wednesdays, we wear purple. Um, I am the author of uh, historical romance novels. My most recent series is called Scandal and Scoundrel, and my last book was The Rogue Not Taken. Um, and my next book, which is out in September, is A Scot in the Dark. And I'm so excited to be here with you today uh, on Facebook Live, talking about my books, talking about romance novels, talking about life and purple and whatever else you want to talk about. So um, leave questions in the comments or in the in the box. In the comment section. <laughs> in the comment section. That's Pam. She's not wearing purple, so she's not going to come and join me. Um, but leave questions and we'll answer them as we go. And uh, I first, though, I figured since we're all here, um, you might like to hear a little snippet of A Scott in the Dark, which is out August 30th, wherever books are sold. Um, and so this is the beginning of A Scott in the Dark. Miss Lillian Hargrove was the most beautiful woman in England. It was an empirical fact requiring absolutely no confirmation from experts on the subject. One had only to set eyes upon her, noting her porcelain skin, her precisely symmetrical features, her high cheekbones and full lips and curving ears, and a pretty straight nose that evoked the very best of classical sculpture, and one simply knew. Add to it her red hair, somehow not at all brash, but a rich golden hue that evoked the most heavenly of sunsets, and her gray eyes like a summer storm, and there was no question at all, Lillian Hargrove was perfect. So perfect that the fact she had come from nothing, that she lacked title, social standing, and dowry, and that she had been plucked from Lord New Ware by London's finest artist, to whom she was not married, was somehow rendered irrelevant when she entered a room. After all, nothing blinded gentlemen, titled or otherwise, quite like beauty. Which was why the female half of the aristocracy took exceeding pleasure in the events of the 24th of April, 1834, the opening day of the Royal Academy Exhibition of Contemporary Art, and the day Lillian Hargrove, favored beauty of the scandal sheets, was made a proper scandal and ruined thoroughly. So that's the beginning of A Scott in the Dark. Uh, I like to say this is my sex tape book. <laughs> um, I write, as many of you know, historical romance novels set in the 1830s um, in London. And I am very excited about this series, Scandal and Scoundrel, because when I pitched it to my editor, um, I sat down at lunch with her and I said, I want to write TMZ in the Regency. I want to write Gawker in the Regency. I want to write Celebrity Scandal and Kardashians and Kanye West and Taylor Swift and Girl Squads and Tom Hardy with dogs in the Regency. And she didn't hesitate because she's always very kind and uh, very trusting. And she immediately said, let's do it. So um, The Rogue Not Taken, which is out now, is my Romancing the Stone with the Kardashians uh, book. And uh, Scott in the Dark is a sex tape, essentially. Lillian Hargrove, the most beautiful woman in England, is, um, in fact, she poses for a nude painting, which she thinks is just going to be kept quietly by the painter, and instead is uh, the corner piece, the centerpiece of the Royal Academy exhibition. And she causes quite a stir and quite a scandal, and her guardian, who didn't even know she existed, has to return from Scotland to London. Uh, and save the day. So I'm super excited about this book. Um, I think the hero and the heroine are were so much fun to write and I'm really thrilled and I can't wait to hear what you all think about it. Um, but let's take some questions. So uh, Pam is going to tell me what you are asking and I'm gonna tell you the truth about things. Well first and foremost we've got a bunch of people who are just loving you right now like Sissy Mecca is saying she can't wait for this. She took a workshop with you at RWA last year, and it was so amazing. Yay! Hi, Sissy. 
Diane Anderson Kwan is saying, Sarah, hi, I love following your London trip. Are you jet lagged? <laughs> Not a question, but it should be. Um, my London trip was amazing. You guys, you should all go. It's the best. It's the best city in the world. Um, I live in New York, and I love New York, but London is the best. And um, head over to my Facebook page um, to see lots of pictures. And um, I basically spent five days tracing around London taking pictures of men, which is, um, you know, was really fun. And I got to pretend that I was, that all these guys were, you know, falling in love with people in the world. And it was really terrific. And I want to go back right now. You can't because you're on Facebook Live I with can't. us. I can't. I'm here with you. And that's amazing. Well, you could go to McAllister, Oklahoma, because Anna Giandroni Beeson says, hello, she wants to start the series. Hi, so Anna. what should she know about the series first? What about what should she know about the first book in the series? Um, the first book in the series, so as I said, I'm a, um, this is, I sort of, Gently, I, I, I lovingly refer to it as um, my Romancing the Stone uh, in the Regency with fewer crocodiles and more Kardashians book. Um, it is the story of uh, Sophie Talbot, who is the youngest, least interesting, least attractive daughter of a family of kind of nouveau riche celebrities in uh, Regency London. And it begins with, for those of you who are celebrity uh, fans, people who are interested in celebrity scandal, modern celebrity scandal, um, it begins with a very um, familiar moment uh, where it's sort of my take on the Beyonce, Jay-Z, Solange event that happened at the Met Gala a couple of years ago where Solange Knowles punched Jay-Z in an elevator. And now that we've seen Lemonade, um, from Beyonce recently, I feel very vindicated. Um, but it was a, uh, so this book begins with uh, Sophie, my heroine, um, punching her, uh, her brother-in-law in a greenhouse in front of all of London and landing him in a fish pond. Um, and then she has to take off because she's basically ruined herself uh, in front of the world. And um, she hies off and stows away, dressed as a footman in a carriage belonging to uh, my king, um, that's his name, King the Marquis of Eversley, the future Duke of Lyme, and uh, they are headed to Scotland. So that is really fun. It's a road trip romance. Um, there's, there are highwaymen and uh, weird but kind of sexy doctors, and I wish I had a labyrinth myself <laughs> after writing a labyrinth. Um, and then the world at the Scottish border. They're on the English side of the Scottish border, but his king's closest friend is a Scot and happens to be the hero of the next book, A Scot in the Dark. And speaking of closest friends, one of yours is watching right now, and Carrie wants to know, Ryan, I love all the heroes in your books. Can you share more about Warnick? Or what's your favorite trait about him? What makes him so delicious? Oh. It's not honey. That's it's not honey. Song. Honey is from uh, The Rogue Not Taken, but Warnick is Alec. War Alec um, is the Duke of Warnick, and he is, um, I don't know if you guys will remember, but in the 90s, in the sort of early 90s, there was a kind of terrible comedy um, starring John Goodman called King Ralph, and, um, <laughs> and the premise was totally ridiculous. And uh, John Goodman essentially... Um, there's a there's a royal event that goes on, and there's a giant portrait taken of the royals, and uh, there's a terrible accident, and a large portion of royals die tragically, and the man who inherits is John Goodman, um, who is you know a normal Midwesterner from America, and he has to go and become king of England, and it's totally ridiculous. But um, what I love about that premise is this idea of what would happen if you know, a, hue, a line of dukes and aristocrats who had all been prepared potentially to become aristocrats died and it was left in the hands of somebody who didn't want it. And um, that's what happens to Alec, um, who, is, who, becomes the who is the 17th in line for a dukedom and through a confluence of tragedies ends up uh, inheriting. And when he inherits the dukedom, along with all of the houses and all of the servants and all of the lands and all of the everything, he happens to also inherit a woman um, who has been forgotten along the way uh, during the deaths and uh, changes 
of um, and, and inheritances. So poor Lily, who is 24 and has been left on the shelf and is now ruined, is Alex's um, ward. And he comes to England to save her because he's at his core a really decent, wonderful stand-up guy who uh, believes that she doesn't deserve to be shamed for what she did, which is sit for a nude painting. And what ends up happening is um, really, I think, I think this book is is really, really special. It's very special to me because Alec is so kind and good and gentle and also hot and Scottish, which is nice. I'm excited to um, write a Scot in the age of Outlander and uh, and Jamie. So, okay. I believe the other Carrie in your life popped in with a question. <laughs> Tell us about your trip to the library in the UK. Oh, I think this is something. This, the other Carrie in my life is my editor. Um, <laughs> so, hi Carrie. Um, my, when I went to London to do research, essentially, and not just research on, you know, men, but also research at the British Library. And um, the British Library, the collections of the British Library are amazing. Um, even if you don't become a researcher to go to the British Library, and that's sort of a process, um, I highly recommend visiting the library at some point if you are there because they have a tremendous standing collection that involve, that includes original Shakespeare folios and the Gutenberg Bible and a bunch of, you know, Beatles um, music and, uh, you know, Jane Austen's writing desk and, uh, and other cool, amazing things. Um, letters from Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII. Um, and so Henry, yes, Henry VIII. <laughs> and so it, the standing collection is amazing, but I went there to look at the collections. Um, they have a tremendous microfiche collection of a, of a, a essentially gossip rag from the 1830s called the John Bull. And um, what I did there was spend a day reading the microfiche, you know, pages of the John Bull and um, the great gossip that came out of there about, you know, marriage proposal, aside from, you know, the gossip about about aristocrats and about politics and about, you know, the king and queen being at Brighton or the queen having a cold. I mean, it was really fascinating and gossip columns have been around for hundreds of years and whatever we think of Tatler and Gawker and Us Magazine, they they come from a long line of, of gossip rags. Um, but aside from all that, also fascinating other things like notes from sweethearts to each other published in the paper, um, marriage, you know, requests for brides from men who are looking for, um, for, mar for potential wives. Um, not really great catches, those guys. They didn't seem to be. Go to my, again, head over to my Facebook page and take a look. I posted a ton of pictures from the British Library, and I think you'll be entertained by some of the things that I found. But man, I could have spent weeks at the British Library. I told my husband that when I die, I just want them to, I want him to just spread my ashes just right by the Gutenberg Bible. So that won't be weird. That's a little creepy. <laughs> um, okay, I've got one from Michelle K. McCurry, and it's probably one I can answer better than you. She wants to know if you'll ever come to Alabama for a signing. And I would have to say that next summer, RWA is going to be in Atlanta, and we may road trip to Birmingham. That would be great. I love Alabama. Um, it, I would love to come. Yes, let's do it. Let's I'm coming party. to your house. Okay, <laughs> Debbie Hurley wants to know who is your favorite character from all your books? It's like picking your favorite baby. Oh, gosh. All right, I actually do have an answer for this, though. Um, hi, Debbie. Um, I, my favorite character is, um, uh, one of the sisters from, um, The Rogue Not Taken. As I said, uh, Sophie, the heroine of The Rogue, of The Rogue Not Taken is the one, the sort of boring, uh, sister of, she's not that, she's not boring. She's wonderful and ends up having a great adventure, but she is considered to be the boring sister of a family of five sisters. And there is, uh, another sister in the crew whose name is Cecily. And all of London calls her sexily um, because she wears dresses that are slightly too tight with necklines that are slightly too low. And she um, isn't ashamed uh, at all of her choices. And she is more than willing to, um, to say what she thinks. And she has very little filter. Um, but at the same time, she makes, um, she 
becomes a very important secondary character in A Scott in the Dark. And um, she is a dear friend as well. Um, and she makes it, she's really my first, it's the first time that I've ever written a real, a real strong female friendship, um, at least in adult romances. Um, and I'm very proud of Cecily for the choices that she makes and the way she defends her friends. Um, she's my, my girl squad, um, my Taylor Swift. So I'm, I really love her and I hope that someday she'll get her own happily ever after. Awesome. Okay, Liberty Hardy wants to know. Hi, Liberty! What have you always wanted to include in a book but been unable to figure out a way to work into a novel? That's a hard question. That is a hard question because, um, Somebody gave me some really great advice early in my career, and they said, um, whatever idea you have, you should just put it into the book that you're working on and just trust that the well will fill and that it'll work. Um, and for the most part, that has been excellent advice, and, and I pass it on to those of you who are writers. Um, but I would say that there is a tremendous um, historical event um, to women who ostensibly, apparently, um, got into an argument over flowers at a ball and ended up dueling, um, topless, which is weird, um, in a field with, you know, seconds and everything, um, women, female seconds and doctors in attendance. And I love the idea of two women dueling, um, but I have never put it into a book because I actually don't, I have written a duel um, once, and but I don't love duels because I feel like they're sort of cheating. It's, it's much more fun if, if when you're angry you, you know, exact vengeance instead of, you know, straightforward arguments. Um, but certainly topless female dueling would be right at the top of that list, Liberty. Okay. <laughs> Spicy. Um, all right, from May Malby. Love you. Love all your books. Will Thanks, there Mary. be cameos by your old characters in the new book? In the new book? Yes, there are a ton, actually. Oh, there are! Yeah! You're going to see um, uh, Georgina and Duncan West in the new book. You are going to see... Cross. Oh, you see Cross. The Fallen Angel is back in the new book. Um, yeah, you'll see a couple... And you'll Temple, because see... there's... Right? Isn't there? Some I really think there's there's some references to yeah. Temple in the new book, um, and certainly they will be back in the next book in the series as well. So um, they're not the the Wests, Duncan and Georgina are are big a big piece of this book. Um, but you will so I hope you'll be happy with what happens. It was really fun to go back to the Angel, and it was really really fun to write Georgina and Duncan um, again now later. Okay, and this is a funny one, actually. Um, the model on the cover, have they seen her before somewhere? <laughs> they, um, you are, I wish I knew this woman's name, um, and I really should know her name because she has, she, you have seen her before. She is also on the cover of No Good Duke Goes Unpunished, and she is on the cover of Because of Miss Bridgerton, Julia Quinn's most recent book, and I'm sure she's on the cover of other books as well. Um, but actually I have a funny story about her because she lives in my neighborhood and my local independent bookstore, Word Bookstore um, in Brooklyn, um, had the cover of No Good Duke Goes Unpunished blown up in the window when that book came out um, several years ago. And she was walking by with her mom and she you know, squealed and screamed out loud because she hadn't seen the cover before. I guess the models don't always see what ends up happening after their photo shoots. And she and her mom came running into the bookstore and you know, pointed and said, that's me, that's me. Um, and they took this great picture, which is on my website and it's also on the Word uh, Tumblr. But um, I'll find it and post it to Facebook later today. Um, but she's really stunning and I love her. So, okay. And you love redheads, so she seems to. I do. I love redheads. Um, can't wait. Oh, this is from Diane Anderson Kwan. She cannot wait for the second book in the series. Thanks, Diane. Do you know how many books we have to look forward to in this series? This series is three books so far. Um, my editor and I just were talking today about there might be a little, uh, a little something to come that will be potentially an announcement in a little while, but. Um, yeah, it's three books for now. 
Okay, and one last question because I know that we've been going for a while. Ashley Collins, she loves your book, Hi, Sarah, Ashley. especially Temple Story. He comes mm -hmm. up again. Please say that one day you will give us another glimpse into Temple, Cross, Bourne, and Chase's lives. Like maybe a second epilogue? Ooh, Julia Quinn territory. Please? Yeah. Sure. Well, like I said, you'll see um, you'll see the hero and heroine of Never Judge a Lady by her cover. Um, no spoilers. Uh, you'll see those two in this book, A Scott in the Dark. Um, and The Fallen Angel is very close to my heart, and I can't imagine I'll ever leave it fully, especially because I like all that sort of dark underbelly of London stuff. And now that I have this casino, why wouldn't I just use it? So... Um, I imagine that we'll see them for many, many books to come. Okay, and one last question from our friend Rachel Grime, who just wants to know how you're doing. Rachel, I'm great. How? This is awesome. I'm purple. It's great. Um, you guys, I had so much fun. Facebook Live is so much fun. I want to do it again and again. And um, I'm sure you should you should come back. And there will be other incredibly talented authors um, soon. Show them the cover one last time. Oh yeah, here a Scott in the in the dark, uh, August thirtieth, coming where, to a bookstore near you. Where can they pre-order signed copies? Yes, you can pre-order copies from anywhere, and you can pre-order signed copies from my local bookstore. Like I said, Word in Brooklyn. Um, I will post the link to maybe Harper Collins will post the link to all of the uh, all of the places where you can pre-order. But signed copies come from Word with. Uh, little gifts from me and my my love and my my allegiance to indie booksellers so thank you so much have an awesome day you guys and i'll see you soon